The moment you've all been waiting for, for a whole year. Nay, even longer than that, since the birth of young baby Cody Rhodes. We've all been waiting to hear one thing. That Pete was wrong. <laughs> you said this earlier, you said you're going to gobble up some humble pie right now. Yeah, so I have, on multiple occasions, vocally, publicly stated that Cody Rhodes not winning at WrestleMania 39 was one of the worst choices that WWE had ever made and that no matter what they did at WrestleMania 40, I would never care as much as I did at WrestleMania 39. Now that WrestleMania 40 has passed, I can confirm I was wrong. They were right. Him not winning at Mania 39 made this win so much better. I hold my hands up. I was wrong. You're not alone. We all yeah. thought the same. The difference was we, we all realised it was going to get okay after two months mm -hmm. when all the Bloodline story and the J stuff was kicking off. That was excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, you stuck with it as yeah. the Tempest. I, as recently as yesterday, <laughs> I said that I will not care as much. And then the match happened and I was like, ah, God damn it, I'm in. Because they, 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 they hooked me. Welcome to the WWE WrestleMania 40 Night 2, Part 2, The End, but also The Beginning podcast review over on WrestleTalk Podcast channel. If you haven't already, please press the thumbs up button, give us a subscribe, leave a comment down below with what you thought of this incredible plea. Uh, PLE apparently now stands for Paul Levesque Era. Hey, hey, very good. Did you get that from somewhere? Yeah, I read it somewhere. Yeah, so it was someone's comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes <laughs> Can't sense. Can't remember who. Yeah. I'm not that quick. <laughs> uh, and of course, send in your ultra chats to wrestletalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out every single one of them over five US dollars. And please go check out our sponsor, wrestlingmasterclass.com. It's an amazing course that teaches you everything you need to know to get into the wrestling industry from starting out as a wrestler in the ring all the way through to roles like manager ring announcer commentator referee being a promoter being a booker even being a wrestling media superstar like these two guys uh, yeah. superstar wrestlingmasterclass.com right but we will start off with what is and it's it's always so difficult to make these hyperbolic statements yeah because you always believe, no, this time it's real. Mm -hmm. This this one was the best thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But I really think, objectively, I've, I've been trying to disprove this statement mm -hmm. over and over again in my head today, and I can't think of anything that really surpasses it. WrestleMania 40, Night 2, particularly the main event of Night 2, is the greatest WrestleMania main event of all time. There's definitely an argument mm. for that. You look so happy. I can't <laughs> I can't think of anything immediately off the top of my head. I'll need to go away and think about it because I can't I we're probably still hyped up from it. But there's definitely an argument mm. for it. This was perfect. This was I I could sit here and I could nitpick this thing. I could, but well, it should have been Stone Cold instead of Undertaker. Oh, it was weird that they didn't have their plan because they gave Cody a chance to win with no bloodline. Mm. And none of that matters because this match was perfect, and it and it doesn't matter. From the off, they did the video package and they included images of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, and I was like, oh my god, this is a the Paul Levesque era is here. You well, know? but they probably thought, well, they're going to show CM Punk on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. We'll show the Bucks now. Um, and then Cody had his entrance, great entrance, um, with his mask, with Brandy there, which was great. And he came down, hyped and everything. But then Ollie, but then Roman had his entrance. Oh, can right? I just also Sorry, say on, on Cody's entrance, though, mm. the the graphics of the nightmare, mm. American nightmare flags. Yeah. And they're all sort of torched. Yeah. Like last night was Infinity War. It's five years later. Cody's been fighting in some post-apocalyptic Mad Max style world. And here he is. To finally try and vanquish the final boss. Yeah. I loved that. The final boss is... The final boss being Roman Reigns relative. in this case. Yeah. And then Roman entered. And to me, this was the final boss entrance. This this entrance got me. Like, the orchestral music does something to me anyway. More than any other type of music. Hearing that song, 
orchest- orchestrified and Roman just walking out as like the violins play him down to the ring. I, d- I felt so much with this story that I've watched from there. I didn't know how to react. I just started crying mm. with Roman Reigns' entrance because I was like, I-, I can't believe that I'm watching this, which in my head is like, this is the last <clears throat> title defense of this reign. This feels like the end of something huge that I've been invested in for such a long time. It's the same kind of feeling as like the en- end game, right? And this thing mm. that you've been, watch- been watching over so many years and you're like, wow, this is the end of that, that story. And him coming out, I, ju- I, ju- I couldn't stop the tears. And not even like, oh, I got a bit teary. I was sobbing as Roman Reigns was walking down to the ring because this was incredible. And those sexy, sexy abs oh, as yeah. well. What? Well, it's inter- I didn't thought about this until you started talking. You are quite uniquely connected in the office to the Bloodline story and mm. Reigns' title reign. Yeah. And I, I was once like that with Cody Rhodes. Mm. Yeah. You know, that... AEW run from that unfricking deniable promo onwards. I'm like, he's my. Actually, before then, I'm like, he's my brother. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I, I honestly yeah. feel like he's my brother. It was one of my favorite wrestlers. Like, you know, it was a rocky few years and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But when Brandy joined him in his entrance, that was the first moment I went, <laughs> didn't, didn't fully cry. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh-huh. And then from that moment onwards, just like the Sami Zayn hug of KO mm. the night before, and, and, you know, we got the mirror of that on night two as well those emotional moments that just already elevate your y- the intensity of what you're feeling before the bell's even rung. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're definitely approaching this from a, it's an end of Roman story. That's the thing. And right? I'm here like, this is Cody's story. That's the thing. And we're both right. That is why this is so special because this is the end of Roman story. Roman from pre-Cody, from, from 2020, and arguably... His entire career, mm. right? Well, especially when you consider the finish. Right! <laughs> oh, I'll get to that. Um, Should we call them chapters as well? Yeah. Because they're, they're not? not retiring. No, exactly. Yeah. This feels like the end of, end of this chapter. Mm. And it's the end of this one that made me so emotional about it because it was the end of this really long thing that I've been invested in for so long. Because I've watched now, because I only started watching wrestling again in 2010-ish, so this is mm. really the first one where I've been like, I've been here the whole time for Roman Reigns' whole career. I've seen all the ups and all the downs for everything. And seeing the, the end of this chapter in particular really got me. Plus, it's the end of Cody's story as part of this and the beginning of the next chapter of Cody's story, all three at the same time. And it felt so important, so big time. You know when they, they constantly have like, biggest WrestleMania main event of all time, and they had it with Roman and Brock at Mania 38, and we were like, no, it isn't. Mm-hmm. Shut up. This felt like it was. This felt like the biggest deal just from the entrances. And I was I was there and I was locked in. And my partner woke up and came in while I was watching. And I was like, not now. <laughs> not now. I hope you slept well, but please leave me alone. I'm watching this match. Are you crying, Pete? No! Yes! Um, oh, God, yeah. I, I was hooked from the off because this was incredible. So... That this was not involving The Rock at the start. I think mm. that's a good idea because it really did remind you, uh, in in a very healthy way, this is the actual match, Roman and Cody, and I don't feel like I'm missing The Rock. Mm-hmm. Never in all of this did I go, "Where's Pucci?" Mm-hmm. It was when he came out. At the end that was the perfect time for him to come out. Um, we we'll sort of go. Th- 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 just watch the match. First of all, just watch WrestleMania. It's one of the finest wrestling pay-per-views ever made. Mm-hmm. So we'll go through the first 20 minutes of this match relatively mm-hmm. quickly. Yeah. Just a really good match. It was just a really <laughs> good match. Just reminds you like, oh yeah, these two have really good chemistry. Mm. Amazing. Roman hitting a crossroads. I was like, oh, oh what a yeah. dick. I love it. Cody hit a spear. I was like, yes, getting payback. It's awesome. Did you hear what Roman said when Cody kicked out of the crossroads? <laughs> It was. I can't remember what it was exactly, but it's along the lines of that move's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Ro- I love how Roman has kept his trash talking from yeah. the pandemic era yeah. when, you know, that was a really good way to add heat to the matches. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though there were, what, 75,000 people there, yeah. we still got Roman it's saying, so this is my company, you bitch, as well. <laughs> <at one point. laughs> you little bitch. You little bitch. <laughs> It was great. Uh, of course, pa- Cody hit a spear as well. Yeah, there was a power bomb through the announce table into, and he got him immediately back in Superman punch for a kick out. Mm-hmm. It was great. But then, after Cody hit a spear and everything, we then got interference number one, which was Jimmy Uso, who came out. So he hit a crossroads, 
Cody hit a crossroads on Roman, I should say. Yeah, but before he can hit a second one, he maintains net control and well, gets him back up. From a tactics perspective, mm-hmm. considering last year, Cody's like, as soon as I get the crossroads, I'm hitting three of them. Absolutely. I'm not going to muck around. Mm-hmm. So that's, it, re- it built, sorry, it built very well because of that idea. 100%. He's, he's never trying to hit one crossroads. He's always trying to hit three. Exactly. And that and that built so perfectly mm. through this match because he hits one crossroads, but before he can hit the second one, Jimmy Uso comes in, super kicks him, but then Jey Uso comes out to even the odds and they brawl up the ramp and then Jey Uso spears Jimmy off the ramp through a table. It was awesome. Great spot. And then you get uh, a spear by Roman with all this distraction. Spear by Roman onto Cody. You're like, oh, and then Cody kicks out. You're like, okay, great. Amazing. I think that was the first spear. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that was it. That was a huge kick mm. out. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're just going through these spots almost like it's a list. That had me leap out my seat. Yeah. Right. And there's 10 minutes more to go. 100%. Uh, it was, this is the first time I wrote, here we effing go in my, in my notes. Uh, Cody did a spear through the barricade. Love it. Afterwards. Your favorite my spot. My favorite spot. Love it. And the crowd agreed. That's when we started getting a this is awesome chance. Mm-hmm. 100%. Get back into the ring. There is a crossroads. And he picks him up. A second crossroads. My god, he's building to the third. But Solo Soko is there. Samoan Spike in a complete mirror of Mania 39. Loved that. Uh, and then you think, okay, well that's Solo's interference done. Who's going to come save him? No, no, no. He get, There's a kick out from the Samoan Spike. He picks up Cody. And you're like, okay, he's holding him up for a spear. Ro- he's going to dodge out the way. Roman's going to spear yeah, Solo. Yeah, that's exactly what right? I thought. Yeah. yeah. Roman's going to spear Solo. Oh, whoopsie <laughs> poopsie. And then interference is going to come out and even the odds and everything. No, they just hit the, the Samoan Spike and spear combo. And Cody kicks out. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, like when yeah, they hit yeah. that, I was like, oh God. They're just going to have him win again. I'll, ju- uh, I'll just point out here as well. Mm. After that first Samoan Spike, Solo is screaming at Roman, mm. finish it, finish it. I'm like, Who's in control here? Yeah. Who's the tribal chief? And Roman's there going, I know, I know. Yeah. And it's just that status thing. We experienced it with The Rock on mm-hmm. night one when Rock said, tag me in, and Roman did so. Yeah, yeah it really felt like Roman was the longer. And it, that's been a sort of hallmark of the, the twilight days of his reign. He looks lower and lower status as these matches go on and more Bloodline members have to help him. Mm-hmm. That's 100% right. Um so we have Solo Sokoa, the Spear and Spike combo, Cody kicks out, and then John Cena comes out. <laughs> it's wabudu-do. Um, and I kind of forgot about the whole Crown Jewel thing, and then as soon as he came out, I was like, oh yeah, yeah Crown yeah. Jewel, that makes sense. Came out, beat up Solo Sokoa, AA to Roman, AA to Solo, through the table, wiped out. Amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I loved it. Just, I, I do need to say, he looks like an idiot. Yeah, but... I don't. I don't get how you can be such a fun actor on screen, and then as soon as you go into wrestling, you're like the most hammy <laughs> over the. This is a really gritty sort of realistic storyline, yeah. and there's Cena feeling like he's from the cartoon Hulk Hogan era. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I enjoyed everything he did. Yes, but he looks ridiculous he all does. the time. He sure does. Uh, but then. To even the odds of John Cena, out came The Rock. And I was like, okay, here we go. Because Rock came out and he was effing and blinding. So much of the broadcast had to be censored. It was hilarious. <laughs> came out, I wrote, here we effing go, again. I um, think Rock said that as well. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Cena goes for a punch, but there's a rock bottom from Rock. Stand until he gets the weight belt as well, with Mama Rhodes written on it again. Goes to do it, but that's when the shield music hits. And I lost my mind for a second because I forgot where I was. And I was like, <gasps> Moxley, yeah. Ambrose is going to be there. I think I think a lot of us did that. I yeah. did that too. I've seen many people in the comments say, oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one I thought Ambrose was coming out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but also because the camera work just slightly missed Rollins mm-hmm. getting in as well. Yeah. It was like, well, is, is Moxley going to come in? Yeah, uh, I was very confused for a second. Mm. And then I thought about it and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> WWE and AEW hate each other. So they definitely wouldn't have worked out a deal for Ambrose Beer. But what if they did? Um, so yeah, it was Seth Rollins coming out in full shield gear with a chair. Mm-hmm, important. Uh, but before he can do anything, he gets Superman punched by Roman Reigns. Just cuts him off. Doesn't get to do anything at all. And he's out, right? I've seen some people, very, very few, um, go, well, that makes Seth look so weak. Mm-hmm. 
And just to just to sort of argue the other side of that, no, considering the finish, Seth is a genius. He played. He wasn't there to physically affect the match. He was there to mind game affect the match. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what worked. That's exactly right. That is. I thought both things. As soon as Seth got hit, I was like, oh, well, I guess he's not doing anything. Mm. And then as soon as the finish started happening, I was like, oh, and then I saw the bigger picture. And I was like, this makes so much sense. So then Roman shuts him down. We've got Roman and Rock still in the ring. And I was like, okay, here's Stone Cold. This is going to be great. Dong. And I was like, Undertaker? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Set the Royal Rumble now. <laughs> yeah. So then lights went down. Lights come back up. Undertaker's in the ring. And he does a not in gimmick. Not in gimmick. <laughs> whatever. And then he uh, he does a choke slam to the rock. Lights go down again. Rock and Taker are both gone. Great. Love it. So goofy. But what I love more than anything was you come back up and your camera, you just see Cody in one corner, Roman in the other, and in the middle, the weight belt that says Mama mm. Rhodes on it, just pointing to the camera. I was like, I don't even know if that was intentional, yeah. but it looks incredible. I and, love it. And the and the chair. And the chair as well. Triple H in the media call put over the guy they've brought on this mm. year. Yeah. Lee something. Did he? Yeah, and something he said like, look, thank you for all the nice things you said about our production. I agree. It's mostly because of this guy mm. and there's more to come. And yeah. yeah, it's like the camera work and the presentation is just on another level right yeah. now. Absolutely is. It's so good. So then we get to the final bit. All the interference is done now. All the bloodline's been taken care of. And we've got Seth and we've got Cody and we've got Roman and we've got a chair. And Roman picks up the chair and he looks at Cody and then he looks at Seth in the shield gear with a chair in hand and he cannot help himself because of the initial betrayal in 2014. He cannot help himself and he whacks Seth Rollins with the chair to exercise his demons from 2014 and it distra and it allows enough time for Cody to recover to counter the spear and hit three crossroads and then Cody pins him and it's the greatest fucking match in the world. Hey, Sorry about swearing. Fluff. We but say fluff. God damn it. This match is Perfect. Did you not get the memo I sent to everybody? <laughs> Only I'm allowed to swear. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was remarkable oh. stuff. And the idea that Roman, after all this time, and it, you know, it's been such a such a thing that it's Roman's his own biggest enemy. He's like lack of confidence or what, whatever. He's creation myth. What's it called when a, a superhero or a super origin story? Origin story. Yeah, I said creation myth. And I was like, that's not the right thing. Mm -hmm. Roman's heel persona origin story is that betrayal of from Seth Rollins. Hundred percent. It, it's like taking Batman to an alley <laughs> and threatening a nice couple with a gun and a kid. Like he's not going to behave well in that situation. I don't care how many mm -hmm. how many meditation retreats he's done. <laughs> Batman's going to act emotionally. Yeah. And this is the same thing for Roman here. And he, yeah, he he, he hits Seth. That's what lost it for mm -hmm. him. He could have beaten Cody. Of course, he had massively cheated beforehand. Yeah. So it's not like Cody fluked his way to victory. And in fact, the way the baby faces interrupted the heel attacks, apart from John Cena's AA, mm -hmm. uh, the, the balance was actually really well weighted mm -hmm. and never making you think, well, Co you know, Cody's getting a lot of help here. Yeah. It was actually Cody was always still at a disadvantage. And there's also the argument <clears throat> to be made that Cody might have won anyway. Like, he might have just been able to counter a spear without Seth's help. Yeah. So yeah. you could see yeah. it as Seth completely costed Roman, or it could just be this was the nail in the coffin. This was just another element that allowed Cody to reverse easier or whatever, you know? I, I, this match has so many layers of storytelling to it, and it's one of those things where if you've been a fan for a long time mm. and you've been paying attention, you get rewarded for it. And it's those kind of moments that make wrestling so incredible because it is unlike any other form of media where you have stories that span 10, 20, 40 years, right? You have stories that go beyond generations, right? You have the entire Samoan wrestling dynasty. That's its own story in and of its own right. When you get rewarded for paying attention to those stories, there is nothing like it. And that's why professional wrestling is so incredible. And this match was a perfect love letter to professional wrestling. And that segue is quite nicely into the post-match celebration. Uh, which Cody wins. We don't get confetti or anything, but we do get all the baby faces. We get Brandy in the ring. Mm -hmm. We get Cody's family, Sammy, Kevin Owens. Orton. Uh, yeah, I was listening to Cody's media 
interview afterwards and he was like, you know, it's so nice to have everyone there. You know, Kevin Owens has been such a big part of like bringing me back to WWE mm. and introducing me to that. He didn't say this, but he introduced him to the Bucks and stuff when he mm. left all those years ago. Yeah. Sami Zayn, all the stuff with the bloodline we mm. went through last year. Uh, Randy Orton. I had forgotten that Randy Orton had... It's a it's, it's legacy. Yeah, back in the day, yeah. John Cena. He used to drive John Cena around for two years when he was starting out, and then he goes and LA Knight as was there too. <laughs> <laughs> so LA Knight's there as well. Yeah. CM Punk gets in, yeah. and then Cody's like, "Come on down, uh, Bruce Pritchard." And nobody cheered Bruce oh, Pritchard. A bit, a bit of booing, yeah, for Bruce. Uh, and then, and I know he doesn't want to come down here. Paul Levesque, Triple H come down and Paul Levesque comes down and he is just like, he looks really grumpy. And at first I thought, why, do he, why does he look so pissed off? Mm. I was like, he's trying to stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, just, yeah. Mm! And they embrace and, and Cody hugs Michael Cole as well. Michael Cole's calling of this was terrific. Mm -hmm. Samantha Irvine's cool when she announced it and she's breaking down in tears mm -hmm. herself have you seen the video of her yeah and then cody's like shaking the hands of the production mm -hmm. guys and nick khan's there and he shakes nick's car nick khan's hands uh on the barricade and that's when i thought like this whole weekend has been designed around the triple h era the yep. paul levec era yeah and it's easy to go well yeah but he's been running creative for a year and a half mm -hmm. but it's not like that's totally true. There has always been this Vince McMahon cloud that's hung over him. Either he's been away from the company, but is is secretly influencing things, or Vince has forced his way back in and he's making things happen, or Ari Emanuel has removed Vince, but you, you don't know what the power dynamics there are like. It's only really late January where Vince has been totally removed, that toxic presence from this company. Even... Taking aside all the lawsuit and the allegations. Not a nice place to work, mm -hmm. by all accounts. Late changes, bullying, toxic work environment, all the things we've heard over the years. And just from a creative uh, fulfillment standpoint, too, a lot of these wrestlers, their storylines are dropped. Us as fans, people we want to see pushed, just gets dropped after three weeks. The famous three-week push. So here was like this moment of catharsis when a lot of people fans, wrestlers, backstage staff, no longer had that cloud over them. And they could truly say, the new era is here. I think it's a, it's a much, of course, cynically, it's a very smart and effective piece of rebranding. Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. He's not there anymore uh, because he's hugely controversial. But also, it's, it is like a moment of healing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was... It was wonderful. It was. It was genuinely moving. Um, of course, I cried again mm. at the finish for all the reasons I said before about the end of the story. And then that extra layer on top of it, feeling like this is, we can move past what was there before now, where it felt like before we couldn't. Even though he was gone, he was always coming back. <laughs> and then he was gone again. You know, But is he? And then he was really gone. And now it feels like we can move on professional wrestling has been this thing that has been mm -hmm. there but it's felt like it's always been taken away from us <laughs> or there's been like aspects of it that have been pushed away or made to feel like professional wrestling's bad you know and it feels like now we can take it back you know we have professional wrestling again and it didn't feel like we had that before and it is it's really nice it because like 1984 has hit an anniversary recently mm. I've been thinking about it a lot and I'm trying to listen to the audio series with Andrew Garfield. And, you know, a huge part of Orwell's 1984 is how much they control language. Mm. And there's many, you know, just standard words they can't uh, use. What's it called? Um, mind, think, think mind. Can't remember what it is. Group think. I don't know. Uh, but the, the idea that this company under this guy has decided you can't say professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Professional wrestling is a dirty word. We've all been like, we like professional wrestling, man. Mm -hmm. and it's sports entertainment. And at the end of this, I thought, that main event, I am sports entertained. Right. That is sports entertainment done to the perfect degree. And then Michael Cole starts saying, I love professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. And professional wrestling is back. And it's at that moment I realized 
even now, I am still saying sports entertainment mm -hmm. because of how much this one guy has influenced us, I would argue negatively, mm -hmm. for such a long time that you, even your internal monologue, starts to talk in the way he does because he has so much power through this monopoly of WWE, which he no longer has. And then Michael Cole says, no, this is professional wrestling. You thought that you thought it was sports entertainment, like mm -hmm. it's a different thing. No, no, this is professional wrestling. Yeah. This is the new era. So, yeah, it's an enormously well done thematic prestige mm -hmm. uh, of the reveal there at the end. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not much more uh, to say about it than that. Um, it was a perfect main event. Uh, it, it just was. Uh, all elements of it, flaws and all, it was perfect. Because um, I think you can call something perfect even if it has flaws. Yeah, and, and it was. Oh yeah, it was perfect. Um, I have so much more I could talk about with Roman specifically and that finish. I'll probably save that for another video though. Mm -hmm. There might be one soonish. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> um, but goddamn, there are so many layers to that. So much like the whole Tribal Chief character was made basically because of that betrayal and the fact that his title reign ended because of it is Chef's Kiss. Goddamn, mm. I love professional wrestling. If you want to, you know, check out the the breakup of the shield, me and Luke are doing a, a deep dive series on it over on the Patreon page, so go over there. And also WrestlingMasterclass.com, the sponsor for all of our WrestleMania coverage this week. Here's a look. Ever dreamt of breaking into the professional wrestling business as a wrestler, promoter, booker, commentator, referee, journalist, podcaster, YouTube star, or another key role? Wrestling Masterclass is a historic online course featuring over 70 HD video lessons, podcasts, and seminars with some of the world's top wrestling experts, both in the ring and behind the scenes, including Will Ospreay, Raven, Dutch Mantel, Doug Williams, Mike Kionda, and so many more. Start your journey today at WrestlingMasterclass.com. Like I said yesterday, great course. It's all online. Go and sign up to it. It's the. I wish I had something like that 10 years ago when I first started trying to get into the wrestling industry. Uh, yeah, perfect stuff. And mm -hmm. what a time to get involved. Like I bet a lot of people are on such a high of WrestleMania right now. It's kind of like our new year. Mm -hmm. So make some New Year's resolutions. Make this new era your new era and join the wrestlingmasterclass.com. Nice. Um, right, over to Ultra your thoughts chance. on the Ultra Chance. Apparently, there's a lot <laughs> we've been warned. Um, her name, DFD, E D S D S C D. I hope I got that right. Uh, late one from last night's live reaction stream. Cody is your new Uwu champion. It's not called the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship anymore, but it's fun. Seth made the sacrifice play, just like Tony. The Cody Avengers are real. <laughs> yeah. Ben Vlerick, who has a very generous donation and a lot to say, oh, said... Thank you. It might just be the most positively emotional I've ever been as a fan. I've been a Cody supporter for as long as I can remember. Legacy, dashing, undashing, icy mm -hmm. champ, moustache, Rhodes brother, even Stardust. AEW2, I unapologetically love the man. I remember all the frustrations, was great as icy champ, but didn't seem like he'd get further. He almost won money in the bank, seemed stuck forever as Stardust, even after Dusty's passing. Cody, fi uh, Cody finally bet on himself, <laughs> and boy did it pay off, and the butterfly effect of it. Partially I thought because you were going to say, Cody effed on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, partially because of him, we have AEW. Because of AEW, we have MJF, Kingston, J, Darby, Punk finally returning to wrestling. The man deserves his flowers. Most importantly, his title is finished to his story. He deserves it. His father would be proud. That being said, I'd also like to take the time to thank Roman. Comes back mm. during a pandemic while his immune system's compromised, completely reinvented himself, put the company on his back, took it to new heights, reached GOAT status. Legendary run. The Cody win wouldn't feel as satisfying, wouldn't be as monumental if it wasn't for Reigns. Perhaps the greatest champion of all time, elevated WWE, the title, the Usos, Jay as a singles guy, Sammy, Cody too. Thank you for everything. Nothing but respect. Yeah. Uh, I really recommend the Cody press conference interview. It's only 15 minutes long, but he, mm -hmm. he really, he spends a lot of time at the start putting over Roman's title reign. Yeah. And he's like, look, I didn't, I don't like the guy. I didn't agree with the way he conducted himself, but if I'm a fraction of the champion he was, I'd be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Uh, someone should make a video looking at that entire title <laughs> reign. 
Who knows if that's coming soon? Uh, the Patrakal said, I love that ending for Roman. He got his revenge on Rollins 10 years later with the same chair shot. It cost him the greatest reign of all time, but Roman also mm. finished his story. Just beautiful. What a run. I hadn't thought about it like that, that that moment was a moment of closure for Roman. Yeah. Huh. That's so interesting. Because now he can move on to be a babyface. Well, that, this is what's so great about this mania is it's not an ending. No. It is... It's a, these chapters have concluded, but a lot of things were started as well. You know, Damian Priest's mm -hmm. title reign we'll come on to later. And Roman and Seth, is that a new, is that starting a new chapter mm. for them going forward? Yeah. yeah, really good stuff. Blake Whitehouse said, the Infinity War Endgame comparison has been played out, but people forget Ant-Man and Wasp and Captain Marvel came out between them. <laughs> Everything between SummerSlam and Rumble was the Captain Marvel portion, but once we got into Endgame, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Geek of Arabia said, I feel like they could have uh, better utilized the Bloodline rule stip, but the delicious main event overbook nonsense is fine by me. Anytime Undertaker gets to choke on someone in a cameo appearance is a good time. <laughs> Just booked him. On the, <laughs> booked yeah. him on cameo, yeah. I, I agree, but, you know, it, yeah, because what differentiates it from a normal hardcore match? Nothing. Plus, you could have had Solo Sokoa dressed up as the timekeeper yeah. and, and all these fun things but that would have been too goofy mm -hmm. my vision yeah. was was not what was best for this yes <laughs> matt hennessy said i love the main event we got a great wrestling match before all the run-ins and overbooking this was wwe endgame roman being his own downfall he could have beat cody but seth proved to be cody's shield as roman tra uh, roman's trauma made him go for seth setting up cody for the win what a moment i loved how drew once again was his own worst enemy mm. he won the title but instead of taking his own advice that he gave seth his obsession over punk cost him the title. I gotta think he signed a new deal. Drew's such a tragic character. Michael Cole at the end of WrestleMania when Corey asked what's next for the bloodline and Cole yelled, I don't care, made me laugh. Mm -hmm. But then when Cole got emotional yelling, I love pro wrestling, I got emotional as well. Uh, it's very interesting how Drew's hatred also cost him the title yeah. reign as uh, earlier in the night. But yeah, that Cody and Seth relationship, when Cody reached through the ropes and shook Seth's hand and Seth, you know, didn't, turn it into an angle or anything it was just like a nod it's like yeah job done mm -hmm. we did it <laughs> yeah it's great go. kevin said i was debating watching this slide and taking the day off i'm glad i did it night two was probably the best night of wrestling overall i've ever seen it probably elevates wrestlemania xl to my top three favorite wrestlemanias ever i agree yeah. well with x7 and 30 mm -hmm. yeah. probably yeah uh, Kevin says uh, the main event post match was all the feelings I cried when Cole hugged Cody. Oh, yeah. Also, I popped yesterday during your review when you talked about the seven steps of a wrestling match. Thanks for everything. I hope you had as much of a great time as I did. And we did. Yeah. And yeah, the seven points of a wrestling match. You can learn those at wrestlingmasterclass.com. Travis said, "Hey, Russell Talk. Travis, long-time viewer since Wonder Ollie days. Roman losing after all the interference due to not being able to forgive Seth. Echoing the 2022 Rumble feud of Roman always hating Seth is why I love pro wrestling. Poetic storytelling. Mm. Yep, it's perfect. Well, I was going to say, and Triple H. This is stuff that's technically before the full Triple H era, mm -hmm. but he he's used a lot of the stuff that came before him and really paid attention to those character histories yep. in a way that." WWE hasn't respected their own past before. Exactly, yeah. Noshua 4 said, Hi guys, having only got into wrestling in the last few years, I haven't been around for some of the sport's most iconic moments. Today, I got to experience one of those, and man, does it feel exhilarating. Loved watching your live coverage, Jam That Jam. Did feel has, like actively historic in real time. 100%, yeah. And shout out to Luke and Sat and mm. Dan for night one for the live coverage. You guys are awesome. And w congratulations to Sat, new Jam That Jam yeah. as well. Congratulations, Sat. Um, I'll be coming for that title one day. Geek of Arabia said, Despite his promises, it turns out the final boss didn't do anything to make Seth Rollins' title belt go away. I'm not mad, just slightly disappointed. Anyway, night two was overall better than night one. Was so happy that Cody got the title at last. Yeah. Uh, Molten Dicester said, Hey guys, absolutely love this uh, this night. 100% a top three mania for me. Everything was perfect. P.S. I find it ironic. The same Roman fanboys that were calling the Cody uh, Cody fans crybabies, all they've done since <laughs> Roman lost, was cry. Gotta love it. I've not seen any Roman crybabies. I've seen one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, are they bots? I don't know. Nah. Are they just trying to get get engagement yeah maybe uh space viking said roman finished his the shields story and it cost him everything i love that it's perfect. i love that it's so good sammy boy said i keep seeing people not getting seth's spot let me give it a go seth told cody he knew roman's trauma is his weakness so seth literally became cody's shield knowing roman still hasn't moved on and a piece of me also likes to think seth wanted to give um give 
Hmm. Uh, it's just been repeated. Uh, oh, so we, uh, we give uh, the Mad Chief some closure, being that he was the one that created him in the first place. Man, when wrestling is good, it's effing awesome. Cody has finished his story in a way Drew has too. Thanks, Roman. Um, I think mo- multiple people have said that Cody was Rome. Uh, Cody was that Seth was Cody's shield. Yeah, and I bet it's only just made sense with me. No, there you go. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Mayor of Painsville, Dan. Hello, hey. Dan. He said, hello, Pete. Hello, Ollie. Hope you're doing well. It is It is time. A Rhodes is WWE champion. Finally, Cody finished his story, and Dustin Rhodes is going to finish his story at WWE soon by beating the other Samoan Joe. It's the uh, the era of Rhodes. Not a, not a championship match, though. No. It's on Wednesday. Was it? I thought it was. No, was it's it? a championship contender. Oh, right. Yeah. Funny. Uh... Adam McKay said, uh, Roman would rather call himself the tribal chief and hold the title for 1,316 days than go to therapy to talk about Seth's betrayal. <laughs> Honestly, love the show from top to bottom. WWE is back. Wrestling is back. Can't wait for AEW on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Joe Coughlin said, uh, Triple H said, him, uh, said it himself last night at the, at the presser. He's having fun. WWE is fun again. What a show. Mm. Um, yeah, there, I can't remember where the report came from, but there was a report that apparently, I think it might have been Fightful Select, that said... Um, when the show went on the air, uh, as like the intro thing was playing, Triple H back said to say, "Let's just have fun. Like the most important thing is yeah, that everybody yeah. has fun." And like that was like the overall message that he wanted to to get out. Great. Which makes sense. Uh, some guy said, "What a mania! What's next for Roman? I think the Rock turns on him tonight. Rock will go to face Cody at SummerSlam, where Roman will return as a mega babyface. Roman will start uh, start the run towards WrestleMania 41. Roman versus Rock." Yeah, I think that's that's the the path i see mm-hmm. I, I always get luke in my head going first episode of the netflix raw roman versus rock i sure i just don't think it's that big a deal to head to to book on the netflix show like as it no wait wait wait, wait. let me let me rephrase <laughs> i don't think you need to stack the netflix show that much is yeah what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah i don't think you need something that's that big you don't need that for the netflix show you can have that on mania um Moose said, "Can we please just take time to acknowledge the undisputed goat of all goat, the Beast Slayer, the man upon which the isle- uh, upon which the island of, rele- of relevancy, the fate of the industry rested in God mode himself, my tribal chief. He will define an era. Thank you, Roman. Yeah, God all mode." Uh, Homer Star said, "Sadly, I was a little let down by the main event. I think it's because WWE set up my expectations with what a Bloodline rules match was going to be. They made a big deal about how Bloodline would be all over the match, but instead." It was just an ODQ match. Don't get me wrong, I still liked the match. The cameos were nice, and the finish with Roman losing because he focused on Seth was brilliant, and I did shed a tear when Cody gave the belt to his mom, but I just wish I liked the rest of the match. Sorry, guys. That's a shame. Go back and watch it in a couple of days when you haven't mm-hmm. got those expectations, and see if that changes your opinion. Yeah. James Krause said, I was lucky enough to be there live. Had a great oh. weekend overall from all the shows I attended. It was I was hoping for glass shatters, but when the gong hit, I lost my mind along with everyone else. <laughs> love to see it for Cody. Much love to y'all and everyone else. The Decadane said, great to watch this with the Hooked on Wrestling X Wrestle Talk crowd. It's utterly surreal. Cody is champion, but it's so euphoric. I'm excited for what's next. Hearing Cole's, damn it, I love professional wrestling for the first time this morning, broke me. Amazing. Yeah, of course, because you probably wouldn't have heard it in the mm-hmm. chaos of the live reactions. Yeah. C Bleach 13 said, Seth was huge in the endgame. He said he was the best person to beat Roman and was in his head. When all the legends cleared, he remained and gave Roman the chance for the shield breakup receipt, giving Cody enough time to recover and win. Seth delivered. Mm. Raging in VA said, Storytelling a decade in the making. Chef's kiss of Roman choosing to hit Seth as his downfall. All the respect to Roman, though, he deserved that title reign. Through all the adversity he faced from his health and us booing him as the big dog, wonderful. Bloodline who said, uh, you can tell how loved Cody is within the company. Everyone coming down to the ring to celebrate. Hell, he almost had Samantha Irvin in tears. Having her in that state shows how good a guy Cody is and how much he cares about everyone. Dusty would be proud. Yeah. Ziggy Gamma said, this time it was real. It was the best. Not just Cody, but every match this weekend has me excited for the future of this company. I actually want to watch WWE shows and not just the highlights on YouTube. Every match? Yeah. Bar, I think that might be getting a bit carried away. Bar, like, <laughs> two or three, maybe four. But most of them. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm most like, yeah, of them. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. Chaz Vanguard said, uh, I held it together all through the match, but when Samantha Rovin announced Cody as the winner with a voice cracking under the emotion, I cried. Love you both. What a great time for wrestling. A lot of tears being shed. It's one of those mm. moments, man. 
D-Man Gamer said, What a mania! Last mania I saw was 37, and Fiend losing oh, irked me so much, ended up switching to AEW. Now I'm going to have to start watching WWE some more. All but one of the matches was incredible. Just wasn't a fan of Paul winning, not a fan of him IRL. Yeah, I can see that. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, Kuzu said, That main event was everything it needed to be. Even before all of the interferences, Roman and Cody have amazing in-ring chemistry. Perfect ending to usher in a new era. All props to Roman. He did what needed to be done. This is Cody's time mm. now. William Rosma said, uh, did you guys miss it during the celebrations at negative one to WWE confirmed? Yeah, he was in the ring. Uh, oh, the end. I didn't see him, but I've heard I didn't it see since. It. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's lovely. That's amazing. Love that. Keg of Meat said, anyone else laugh when Roman immediately took out Seth when he got in the ring? Yeah, I did a little bit. I was like, wait, what? Like, I was just a bit confused. Yeah. But then it made sense very quickly. Absolutely. Cody's Tattoo says, uh, love that finish to Mania. Still think it could it should have been last year, but the whole end game vibe makes the, the long wait worth it. Thoughts on Cody's backlash opponent? Rock, mm. maybe? Also, who beats Rhea if not <clears throat> Becky? Feels like another year of no Jeopardy matches. Yeah, I don't know about Ripley. No um, idea. For Cody, I think you've got Gunther right there. Yeah. I, I not a backlash. Not a backlash. Yeah, that's... Uh... Because I want Gunther to win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, You could have Drew. It all depends where the champions end up, because both mm -hmm. Cody and Damian Priest are on Raw. So one of them's going to have to jump over the SmackDown, yeah, really. That's true, which technically should be Cody because he's got yeah. SmackDown's belt, yeah, really. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Um, Meng uh, said, Incredible Mania. The main event was amazing. It's probably the closest thing you're going to get to a Firefly Funhouse match. That is a really interesting mm. comparison of just like this project of just like, here's wrestling's past. Yeah. Here's all these stories. <laughs> that's great. It is equally a wrestling match as it is a character deconstruction of the bloodline. Mm. Truly a new era of WWE. I love pro wrestling. Kevin Kargez said, uh, my wife's faves are Seth and Becky, so she had a rough mania. <laughs> she was happy at least Cody won, even though she thinks Roman is cool. She says, Becky is awesome and Seth and his outfits serve, I can't say that word, Fluff. C word. Um, oh, uh, is that? Oh, yeah. Is that what the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's that's a, that's a phrase. I've not heard that phrase yeah. before. It's a drag race thing, so mm. I'm uh, reliably informed. Um, our first mania as new fans, it was so fun. Cheers from Colorado. Oh, great. New fans. Cheers well, to welcome you. Welcome aboard and loving yeah. pro wrestling. It used to be called sports entertainment. Yeah, it's pro wrestling now. Didn't you hear? Uh, Alan McKay said, maybe the real tribal chief was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I take back what I said about Roman from 2014 to 2019. He is such a great performer. Also, it was really surreal to see Punk and Cena in the same ring during the celebration. I didn't even think yeah. about that. God damn. Well, you know, I never said anything about Roman specifically. I said stuff mm -hmm. about Roman's character. And that yeah. character was crap. It was. It was quite poor. Fried Melon said, I have a weird question to ask. The Universal Championship is te still technically active, according to the website. Does this make Cody Rhodes a two-time world champ? What? Why would he be a... Uh, because he's got the Universal Championship and the WWE Undisputed Championship? I guess so. Is that no, what you're doesn't. trying to say? No, it doesn't. No. Silly. Um, King Scorpion said, Hey guys, loved the show and live reactions and was happy for Cody finally winning the title. WrestleMania 40 was a great show, but something about the atmosphere and matches made it feel like a SummerSlam PLE rather than a WrestleMania to me. Oh, I can't... What? What did? I get that vibe from night one. Not night two. Yeah. Crowd were alive for it night two. It was too two. chilly to be a summer sun. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Burley Rob Burwell said, I was there. Being in that crowd was truly special and so worth it. Samantha Oven crying while announcing Cody as the new champ got us all in the crowd. Damn it, I love professional wrestling. I love you guys for being able to share my love with WrestleTalk. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, uh, where did I get to? Sorry, I had to refresh. Uh, Riley Page. Riley Page said, Last night was a top three all-time WrestleMania. While I still hate 30, uh, 39's ending more than I loved 40's, I cannot deny this was the perfect ending to the story. Gosh, pro wrestling is the freaking best sometimes, and we have never never eaten better than now. Uh, Chopper's Chopper said, <laughs> uh, Genuinely, when the celebrations were going on for so long, I kept thinking, Oh, Dusty had the spell, and it got, had it taken out of his no! hands. Some BS is still about to happen. I thought the same. Yeah. I thought Rock's going to come back from the Shadow Realm and go, We're starting the match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some BS is still about to happen. I'm just so used to being let down. It's just beautiful to get that moment of catharsis. You know what? Even so... The, the broadcast ends and then you've got the five minute mm -hmm. video recap thing yeah. afterwards. I was like, just just to make sure <laughs> this is the Paul Levesque era. Is this the new copyright logo? 
<laughs> it comes back up. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. We're restarting the match. Imagine. But I've seen so many people go like, how on earth do they edit these things together in time? Like mm. WWE's production team are amazing. They do it for every single live sports broadcast in the Oscars. That's true. It's, yeah. um, yeah. It's it's not something you, it's very impressive what it they do, but impressive. it is not unique no. to this. You have people making them throughout the show. I used to sort of work in a, a similar department, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember one guy said to me one day who, who used to do it, it was it like his speciality. He was like, "I'm getting too old." I was like, mm. "What do you mean you're getting too old? You're like 35." He said, "You need to be so fast mm-hmm. just from your finger motion because yeah. it's like you know you got a little dial. You go cut the tape, cut the boom." Bu- 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 mm-hmm. bu- um, he said, "It's it's a young man's game. You got to be in the, in your twenties. Damn, that's crazy." Um, Cartwheel Joe said, "Hey lads, was at the show last night alongside my best friends, and it was the greatest show I've ever been to. Being blinded by lights for two hours aside, I shed a tear for Cody. Being at Mania 37 for Roman's first Mania defense is poetic. I got to see it end. Very nice." Uh, Pipe Bomb Above All said, "Can't wait to see this main event get four and a half stars from Meltzer because I had a predictable ending and was overdone." Lol. Meltzer has said that he he thinks predictable is the way to go most of the time. Mm-hmm. Because this whole weekend, very predictable. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of what it should be Absolutely. when you're concluding all these stories. Very rarely do you go to the cinema and the main characters lose at the end. Mm-hmm. And you go, well, or, or like they win and you go, well, that was predictable. Yeah. Of course they're going to win. It's yeah. about buying into the jeopardy and the journey. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Ziggy Gamma said, prefacing this by saying I love the main event, I would have loved to have seen more of the Anawaii family, like uh, Jacob Fatu and Lance Anawaii showing no. up for this. Probably for the best, though, is it probably would have taken away from the match for a lot of people. Yeah, and uh, people wouldn't un- know who they were. Exactly. It like, we, we know who they are, but you, yeah, you can't just put people out there yeah. and expect 75,000 mainstream fans to mm-hmm. go, is that, oh, it's another Fatu? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron Hanrahan said, Hi guys, I was there last night. Man, I felt lots of emotions. I cried when Cody was being raised up with the title. Mm. Everything he worked for, and now he's a top star of the industry he helped make better. Cody's story is so powerful to me. Pipe on greater than math. Yeah, it is. There you go. Cody James said, The main event was the biggest overbooked mess I've ever seen in my entire life. Five effing stars. Yeah! <laughs> also, now Pete has finished the story. Also on his birthday of all days. Is it overbooked? If or it's great. It's, it's just it, booked. It's just booked. It is a booked main event. Overbooked means it's gone over. Yeah, it's too much. This is booked. This is just booked. Wow, that, perf- that main event was booked. It was a perfect amount of booked. Uh, Alan said, told my lady I'll propose if Cody finishes the <gasps> story. Wish me luck happening in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Good luck. Uh, welcome to Rome, said. How do I know this WrestleMania was as close to perfect as it could get? My eight-year-old son, Pearson, was sobbing, crying. My 11-year-old Charles was crying. My four-year-old Colin was cheering all because of how happy they were for Cody. Investment, payoff, perfect. Oh, they'll remember that forever. Yeah, they really will. DJ Thatcher said, On a whim, I decided to watch SummerSlam 2015 and unironically fell in love with Stardust. When he was released, I followed Cody to the indies, then AEW, fell out of love with WWE, back to WWE, and back in love with WWE again. What a decade it's been. Mm. Uh, There's one, one more, yeah. One more for now. <laughs> Dan said, I think a Seth heel turn on Cody is coming up later this year, with him blaming Cody for costing him the world title by getting him involved with the bloodline. It's nice that long-term booking is a real thing now instead of scripts changing constantly. Definitely. I don't know agree. about that. I, I don't I, I don't want to see this Seth-Cody thing turn into a feud. Me neither. They've been there. Yeah. They've had their feud, and then they teamed up and they, they did that. They should be apart for like a long time now. Yeah. At least like a year. Um, so we could we could miss it. Well, thank you very much for all those chats. To keep getting them in to WrestleTalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out every one over five US dollars before the end of the show. Let's get into the rest of the night. My God. How long have we been live? I can't even see. 50 it's minutes. Fine. There's yeah. a clock right there. There is a clock right there. I suppose we did go live <laughs> exactly at three. Uh, right. This show began with Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon there. Yeah. That was weird, wasn't it? It said, please welcome Stephanie McMahon. And I was like, oh, I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then she came out and did a promo. I was like, yeah, I, th- I think this is fine, right? Is it's, it? It's one of those things where, you know, like my mind sort of stalled as well. And it was trying to go, well, she, but she did resign. So, yeah. you know, she she did definitely try and stop Vince. Yeah. Um, she did lead a thank you, Vince chant also, yeah, uh, which um, is we- uh 
so uh, uh, you know what? I mean, I'm having such a good time. <laughs> I'm not going to think about it. Yeah, and right? then she said, uh, "As the start of like the first mania, a lot of this weekend is is about it's not Vince anymore. Yeah, it's Paul Levesque. Mm -hmm. So she said, Mania 40 is the one she's most proud of because it's the Paul Levesque era. Yeah, nobody understands how to bring all wrestling fans together." More than Triple H. Mm -hmm. She says that <laughs> as the daughter of the guy. Like, it's it's remarkable. And, you know, it's a very cynical erasure of Vince from the company and the company's history. But you got to do it. Yeah. you got to do it. She also had a new remix of her song, which had guitars now. Um, does it make it better? I don't know. Might still be one of the worst, but I think it is marginally improved. The opening match was Drew McIntyre taking on Seth Rollins for his World Heavyweight Championship. Drew got a really good entrance through mm. a pipe band and all these people holding swords up as kind of an archway. And then Seth came out in what's called a mummer's parade. Sure. Um, and he, I said he looked like Adam Rose when mm -hmm. he was coming down. Yeah. I get why they did it. I would have preferred Seth to sell. <laughs> yeah, big time. But that's... That's not Seth's way, is it? Yeah. And I also think this kind of summed up, sums up my problem with Seth, mm -hmm. personally, and this character. Because I really like Seth Rollins as a performer. When Definitely. he wrestles, I think he's fantastic. Um, I wrote on this that Seth's entrance is insane, and I feel like this does very well sum up, the entrance sums up his character really well, in that there isn't one. Because his, his character is, I have wacky outfits. Mm. And I think that's it. That's like the whole thing. Uh, he laughs as well. And he laughs occasionally. And, like, the commentators are all having a good time, and they're like, oh, this thing's crazy. Whoa, wacky. Wow, crazy. And then Corey Graves has got like, well, we have to shift our focus here because we have a world championship coming up. I'm like, that's the problem, is that you take away from the seriousness of any situation because it's all treated like a big joke, right? Because Seth's like, oh, crazy, wacky, crazy man. And then you go, yeah, it is very serious, though. He's facing Drew McIntyre for the world title. It's like, okay, that's a tone shift, a very drastic tone shift. <laughs> but also, it's like a TV show. The last episode I watched of WrestleMania 4 yeah. ended with, oh my God, Seth and Cody, this mm -hmm. is the lowest low. He's been beaten up. He's injured. And then the very next scene I watch of my WrestleMania 40 show, mm -hmm. he's dancing around. Yeah. It's, it totally undermines everything. It does undermine the story of the match as well, where Drew, Drew is against Seth and it's like, you've not taken me seriously. You've been mm -hmm. distracted by the bloodline stuff. And then Seth comes out, no, so I don't want to get too much into it. But, you know, that is a criticism and that's a genuine mm -hmm. criticism. Agreed. But the actual match was a Brock Lesnar match. Drew yeah. McIntyre, <laughs> yeah. Claymore, they get outside suplexes. But Drew, even though he told Seth off for doing this, kept getting distracted by CM Punk on commentary. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. I loved the immediate Claymore and I kind of wish that had been the finish granted they <laughs> they had the plans afterwards with damien priest and i don't think it would have worked no. but i kind of wish that seth came out all like whoa i'm crazy wacky seth let's get in the ring <laughs> shut up <laughs> claymore yeah. here we go I'm done now i think that would have been perfect um but regardless threw him around like you said kept getting distracted by by punk on commentary to the point where he was just taunting him all the time Anytime I did a thing, he'd look around at Punk or they'd go outside and he'd be trash talking Punk on the outside all the time through the whole match, just reinforcing that he's there. Tries to do a future shock and he says, This seemed familiar, does it, Punk? Like, you know, that's mm. how, he, how he did it. And then, of course, because he got so distracted, Seth countered that into a pedigree on the outside. So it's just all the time, it was, it, you had the seeds of Punk is Drew's downfall. You had that through the whole match because Seth kept getting offense in uh, whenever Drew got distracted by Punk which was nice for what happened later. Um, Dre uh, Drew went for a GTS. Seth countered again, went for a punk thing. Seth got on top again. It was great. There was a stomp on the table. There was another stomp inside the ring. Um, there was a, a Seth countered the GTS, then another Claymore, then a stomp on the table, then another Claymore and another near fall. But then Drew hits a final Claymore and gets the win. I think it was Clay 4. Clay 4, total. Yes. That was four Claymores. Yeah. And yet, it's such a fun match. Mm. That those those sort of smash mouth, finisher, finisher, signature, signature, like the Brock Lesnar Goldberg style. I really, really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, and Drew finally wins a belt in front of fans, which was what they kept putting over on commentary. And everyone's like genuinely happy for it. Yeah. Seth looks upset and it seems he seems to say like, I'm coming back for that. Mm -hmm. Um 
like, you know, own fault. Yeah. He did not have to wrestle last night. Um, but Drew's celebrating, he's kissing his wife, mm -hmm. and the crowd, are, yeah, they're like behind Drew Congratulations, here. Drew. And he just can't help himself. It's perfect. And he carries on round, and he goes over to Punk on commentary, he sits down. I wish he, sit, he sat cross-legged. That would have been cool. Because yeah. he was sat on his knees. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't have worked for the spot. Yeah, maybe, maybe he was hurt. Yeah, or got tight or something. And he just keeps on talking to Punk, and Punk's like, I can't hear you. I yeah. can't stop talking to me. Yeah. And Drew keeps talking to him for like a minute. I thought this was done really, really well. It felt legit. Mm -hmm. And then Drew stood up and Punk had had enough. He takes out Drew's legs, takes off his arm brace and starts hitting him on the floor. The crowd start to boo Punk a bit mm -hmm. because they're so behind Drew. Right. It's, it's his moment in front of fans. But then Damien Priest's music hits. He runs down. He cashes in. And he wins. And then has a lovely celebration moment with Judgment Day, mm -hmm. who are these, you know, wicked heels, but oh, I'm so happy for them all. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 again, a nice <coughs> moment. And Drew gets his moment stolen because of CM Punk, which, like, Drew injured Punk, Punk took away Drew's title. But it's also entirely Drew's own fault because he didn't need to do any of that. It's perfect. They both ruined each other's WrestleManias mm -hmm. in a way. And yeah, Drew afterwards, he's not like angry at Priest. No. He's not looking up at Priest going, like, how dare you? He's looking at Punk. Yeah. So what, a, like I said it in my review, you've ended the Seth Drew feud. You've really heated up this Punk Drew feud and you've started the Damien reign. Mm -hmm. So just in terms of ticking boxes, mm -hmm. like that... I don't think you can do much more in professional wrestling with a segment and match. I thought this was honestly the perfect outcome because a lot of people were like, imagine if Damian Priest comes out after Drew wins and cashes in. And I was like, oh, I don't want to take away from Drew's moment. Yeah. Like, that's not quite right. Or people saying that Priest should cash in on Cody. And I was like, definitely not. That sounds insane. <laughs> but the fact that they had the punk inclusion mm. makes everything worth it. Punk costing Drew the title here is absolutely perfect. Perfect outcome for everything. After that, we had the final testament versus the pride. Uh, who aren't called the Pride internally. They're called Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Yeah. Uh, this was fun. This was fun. It was eight minutes. It mm -hmm. was an ECW Philadelphia street fight. Uh, they had Bubba Ray Dudley as the special guest referee. That was a surprise. Sure. Snoop Dogg was on commentary. And yeah, kendo sticks, tables, B-Fab fighting Scarlet. Mm -hmm. uh, Did a Russian leg sweep through a table <clears throat> on the outside. It's a cool spot. Side Russian leg sweep. Through a table <laughs> on the outside. I don't know if you heard that bit. And, uh, you know, Bubba puts his glasses on when Cross gets in his mm -hmm. face and, you know, does quite favour the, the faces here. So Lashley, Street Profits, they get the tables. A table just breaks yeah. under Cross. Unfortunate. But they, I thought they covered quite well. They're Absolutely. like, well, let's get another table. Yeah. And they get Way. it and they frog splash. Montez Ford frog splashes Cross through it. Mm -hmm. And the table just split perfectly. Oh, it's so good. Those are some gimmick tables right there. Oh, yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, really fun. I, it was just throwaway, hardcore nonsense. Yeah. I think for me as well, having both these matches back to back, they start fast. Mm. And that it was like a much faster <coughs> pace than night one. Night one felt quite slow through a lot of the night. This felt like, okay, we're having matches. All of them are fun and fast and exciting. And then they carried that on with the next one, mm. which was LA Knight and AJ Styles, which also... AJ Styles came out with brand new entrance music. It was... He's a bad guy. It was good, I think. Nice. So that this is one thing that I hope Paul Levesque does change because mm -hmm. it was such a great part of his NXT days. Mm -hmm. Let's just get CFO money back, please. Yeah. Because... I, the, there was some sort of disagreement yeah. or something. So maybe not them, but other people who were good. The entrance music in WWE, I think, is, is pretty subpar. Yeah, considering that those glory 2010 years. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah. Um, LA Knight and AJ Styles, AJ Styles' new music. Styles just ran down to the ring and they just started going at it, just started brawling from the off. And I was like, okay, great, yes, another one. Amazing, fast pace. Um, three back to back to back, all starting off really hot, which is great. Um, Knight showed some really good fire in this in this match. It was like a pretty, it was a fairly standard like back and forth match, but he showed some extra fire. He was ripping up the the, the protective pads on the outside. 
um, went to do a move onto it, but got back body dropped onto it, which was really nice. Um, just made it back in for like a nine and a half count, which was really well done. I thought like it didn't move until like mm. seven and a half or something like that. And I was like, oh, is this the end? No, okay, good. We're good. <laughs> um, he just always did the springboard 450, but he got his knees up for it. Um, I also thought it was really nice that this match ended with one finisher mm. because they did loads of them in the uh, Seth and Drew match. So it's nice to just be like, okay, yeah, he went for the phenomenal forearm, he counted it, BFT, he wins. LA Knight wins. It was I, good. I don't think, oh, I can't remember about the triple threat, but that's kind of different because you've got other people mm. breaking the Exactly, up. yeah. Um, but I think the only other finisher kick out was Bailey kicking yep. out of the moon soul mm-hmm. in the in the co main event. So yeah. it really built. It was very. It felt like the entire mat, the entire card of night two had really been considered mm-hmm. in well, where how many moves do we do here? Yep. How many finishes do we do here? Yeah, just 100%. like top, top, top level wrestling execution. Yep, it was a good match. I had a very good time with it. I enjoyed it. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of LA Knight's in ring stuff. Love him as a sort of just personality. Mm-hmm. So he really impressed me here. I, I found myself really getting into it. And I actually wanted it to go longer. Mm. Yeah. I I wouldn't have minded, even though I just it served a greater purpose, but I was like, oh, I wish you kicked out of the BFT there. Mm. And then LA Knight can kick out of your finisher. Um so yeah, hopefully we get some more from them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, really good stuff. So, good night match. That was the three words, wasn't it? I believe on yes. the account. Yes, yeah, it was. Or mid AJ match. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I think that works. That works for both of them. Uh, they showed off the Hall of Fame class mm-hmm. um, this year. Paul Heyman getting the ECW theme. Very nice. Uh, then we got the United States Triple Threat: Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton. Um, the Prime Bottle was here once again for this one. Um, I didn't think it was going to be KSI. I thought in my head that it might have been Sami Zayn before we saw Sami backstage. That would have been I fun. thought that would have been really fun yeah. where like Logan goes out to be like, oh, come on, KSI, do whatever. And it's like, oh, it's not KSI. Mm-hmm. It's Sami Zayn. Oh, what a what a twist. And then he, he beats him up or something. I thought it would have been fun. but It was I Show Speed. Yep. He's a, he's a YouTuber just like us. Mm-hmm. I assume moderate uh, as the same amount of success. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It'll be us next year. Yep, 100%. Um, he got punted, though. I sure did. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but Sami Zayn was not in the prime bowl because Sami Zayn was backstage for Kevin Owens' entrance. Uh, Kevin Owens came up and in a complete mirror of what happened with Sami Zayn's entrance on night one, uh, Sami wished him luck, fired him up, gave him a hug. It was really nice. And then from that, I was like, well, Kevin has to win now. I think they should have gone further. I think Sami's wife and child should have also... <laughs> have been congrats or like hyping up owens yeah would have been great owens had his little buggy and he drove the buggy down yeah that was fun because logan got a big truck with mm-hmm. a prime bottle on as well and then he then he randy orton makes his entrance and owens looks backwards backs up yeah and orton gets on the buggy to drive down together like yeah. it's wrestlemania 3 and i just thought this is Logan Paul is such a good heel. Yeah. That I want two baby faces to beat the crap out of him. Mm-hmm. I don't care that they're on the same page. Yep. Uh I said I made a note at this point and said, I like seeing people just have fun. Cause they look like Orton and Owens. We're just having fun. Well, this is great. This is really nice. Mm. Um they teamed up to just beat up Logan. Like Logan got out the ring and was like, Go on, you two, fight. And they were like, No. So then they got out and just beat up Logan. I was like, yeah. This is great. Good stuff, guys. Um and then at one point, they're just having fun beating up Logan Paul. And then they both try to go for the pin at the same time, which was a really a stupid spot, but a very fun spot. Uh, and then they got up and they're like, OK, fine, we'll just beat him up some more. And then Orton goes for the RKO. And then he's like, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, he he uh, bites yeah. his yeah. fist. And goes, mm, ah. Yeah, and oh, like, it didn't work. What sorry, the hell, man. dude? <laughs> and then they just decide to start lamping each other, but in sort of a friendly yeah. way. It's like, well, we're going to beat each other up because we're in a match, but it is what it is. There's no, like, I don't hate you, but I'm just going to beat you up. Um, Logan then did a double buck shot to, to break that up. Yeah, and pretty good. And he also got uh, there was also a buckshot into a snap power slam from mm, Orton. Yeah, uh, Logan hit Kevin Owens to the Swanton bomb, and Logan's like, oh, "I'm going to do it better." Does yeah. a Swanton bomb on Owens, hops up into a frog splash on Orton, mm-hmm. and like you know, the the, the card was heated mm-hmm. up until this point. Logan Paul is getting like nuclear heat from the crowd. Mm-hmm. I, he's so athletic. He's so good. Yeah. And a lot of the match were was really meticulously planned out in 
three person spots. Yeah, hundred percent. I was gonna. I, I don't think I actually made a note of it, but I thought about it while I was watching that I'm. I really found myself being like, this has very rarely been a one-on-one match. Because, mm. you know, the, the typical old formula was one-on-one match and a person rests on the outside and then the person comes in, one of them goes out, and then it's another one-on-one match. This felt like a triple threat match yeah. at pretty much all times. Uh, it was really, really good. I also love one bit where Kevin Owens did a code breaker, but landed it in a senton on Logan Paul at the same time. This is just a really mm. fun spot. Um, and then Michael Cole mentioned Chris Jericho, and I was like, oh my god, what are you doing? Not his only appearance. No, I'm I know, sure. right? Yeah. So Owens kicks out of an RKO, and then Logan gets the brass... Oh, so there was a finisher kicker. Um, yeah. <coughs> Logan gets the brass knucks, and he uses it on Randy, but Randy kicks out. I thought that was wild, because not mm. only is that the, the, you know, the one lucky punch that he does without the brass knucks, but then he also used brass knucks on top of it, and Orton just kicked out, and I was like, oh! I don't know if that should be kicked out of I but okay th- yeah i know what you mean i think it's okay if it's used to build autumn versus paul in a mm-hmm. singles which i sure. i feel is where we're going yeah um then randy gets the brass knucks mm-hmm. after that and he hands it to the ref hands it to the ref because yeah. he's gonna punt yeah. logan paul he is his own weapon yeah i think Corey graves that's great uh but this is when the prime bottle got involved it's i speed i, I show, show speed, speed. Yep. And uh, Randy kicks him mm-hmm. on the outside. It's like a Sparta kick. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it yeah. was like. Just a straight front kick. This front. is Philadelphia. Well, he's got he's got a lot of padding with the prime yeah. ball, so we can get away with it. It's just like, oosh. It's great. And he launched in the air, but like only horizontally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Um, he RKO's I show speed onto the commentary table, which is very nice. Didn't break. Didn't break, which makes it look, I think, better Mm -hmm. for an RKO Um, gets back in the ring and he hits an RKO from a pop-up powerbomb like KO goes for the pop-up powerbomb counters into an RKO which was sick Logan then tried to throw Orton out but then he countered but then Logan countered that again and chucked Orton out and then uh, does a frog splash onto Owens and then pinned him for the win very good match and I really like that little bit because it's just an extra little you don't need to add the bit where Orton counters and then Logan counters him again but it just adds to it. Mm. Adds a little bit more. Adds a little, a little something. Yeah, that match was 17, 20 minutes in total. And I think the, the next match, Bailey and Neo Sky, was 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's a really nice progression throughout the card of, yeah, you're going to start off with three 10 minute matches. And then the final three are going to, you know, they're your championship match, mm-hmm. other championship matches. They're going to go 15, 17, 33. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, I. I Trying not to compare things to AEW, although it's they're making it very difficult right now. Mm-hmm. AEW's cards are often 15, 20, 20, 15. Like they're all the long pay per view matches. So I appreciate the card building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't feel like an indie show. <laughs> God, people are going to hate you. I'm only, I'm only kidding. I said that as a troll bit. Um, because it was all finishes at the start, which yes, is a very indie style yes, of wrestling. Yes, it is. Um, we then had Bailey versus EO Sky. I love this match. This was really good. Um, AK Camera, baby, it's <laughs> back. Um, I also wrote, "How dare Philly try and steal our chant?" Because they were doing the "Hey, hey, hey Bailey, hey, hey, Bailey, who, huh?" I want to know, etc. How dare you? That's ours. Don't take it. Um, You're welcome to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, EO worked over the leg on this one. I I really bought into the selling of this. Like Bailey did a dive to the outside. When she got up, she was just kind of mm. just kind of not like overdoing it, but just a little little grab of the knee, little like tap it a couple times. Okay, here we go. But then EO immediately targeted it, and I was like, oh sweet, that wasn't because it felt like it was legit. Mm-hmm. Like it was the kind of thing where you're like, oh, a bit of an awkward landing, but okay, we'll move on. But no, that was all part of the selling. So EO saw it and was like, oh, I'll target that. Uh, really good storytelling. And this match just like built and built and built across that 15 minutes to the point where the crowd just wanted Bailey to win so badly. Like, I, Bailey has that intangible quality that I think Sami Zayn does as well. Mm. Where you just want to see them do well. And you just want to buy into whatever it is they're doing. And it, they just played into that perfectly in this match. They know exactly what Bailey's strengths are. I just built the match around that so that by the time they got to the end, the crowd were at a fever pitch, just wanting Bailey to get the win. It was so, so good. And it's interesting you make that comparison because I hadn't thought of Sammy and Bailey, but there were moments in this match where I thought, Eo's being pretty Gunther right now. 
Yeah. Especially like the, the final sequence bit was where EO hit a moonsault, Bailey kicks out. So EO's like, all right then, moonsault, moonsault. Just like Gunther was doing mm -hmm. those splashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so vicious. Uh, and even after that, um, Bailey went to hit the rose plant. And EO was just like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> like, stood flip, up out flipped of out of it. It was oh, so cool. Like, great. a proper handspring. It was rad. Um, and then the crowd got, like, so rabid yeah. after that. That, like, that flip up's where everyone went, oh, as she did it. And they were, like, up here on the nines. It was great. Uh, but then Bailey managed to come back, hit the rose plant, and Bailey wins the title. It was great. I really like it. It was just such a different pace to the rest of the night. Yes. Where this was working over the body part. Mm -hmm and a slow progression of that story, whereas everything else was very fast-paced, finisher, finisher, finisher. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I really like it. And then Snoop Dogg announced the official two-night attendance and got the word, the number 420 in there. He sure did, which was not supposed to be there, but mm -hmm. he did it. Um, but, yeah, that was, um, that was the show. Then we had the main event that we've already spoken a lot about. Overall... I gave it a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I kind of got her right. Like this was this was amazing. Um, the the quality of wrestling across it was like great from mm -hmm. start to end. We can have our faults with it. We can have our nitpicks, but honestly, it was just really enjoyable from start to finish. And the main event is one of the greatest main events I've ever seen. So, yeah, there was, easy five out of five show. There was part of me that considered giving it a hundred and one percent this morning, and I thought, don't do it, Ollie. 141 and two-thirds. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, a poll should have gone up now to see what you all think. Uh, this might be one of the highest thumbs-up ratios we've ever had. I can see the thumbs-up from here. It's oh, a lot of them. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and let's get into your final Ultra Chats. Yeah, speaking of thumbs-up like the video um vandalia 1998 said uh, the ending of xl got me so emotional it's the start of a new era when they announced everyone that aaron the roman uh, be <laughs> at the start of the match and mentioned edge and brian i don't think they would have done that under the old regime absolutely oh, 100%, not. not yeah that was a uh, definitely taboo uh james c morgan said i hope that once the bloodline kick out roman and he is all alone and has no one to turn to that is when seth helps roman out leading to roman's face turn hmm that's interesting i'm not against it but also i am Cause yeah because I, I want that that trauma forever you know i don't know i want, I want something I'm it's more weird because i mean they have actually they've reconciled reconciled multiple times yeah yeah, yeah. but we're just gonna ignore, ignore that because that, that was fine. weird yeah uh charles burke said and as cody uh holds the title up high we see the story finished <clears throat> that was a truly special main event i had everything i wanted and things i didn't know i wanted mm. anybody else laugh when seth tried to come in and help but get dropped immediately jam that jam Lumberjack92 said, I loved how the main event went down. My only wish was having more to the bloodline stipulation. Commentary said Cody was screwed. Maybe make a stipulation that anyone from the bloodline could pin Cody to add to the lingering doom. <coughs> I just think bloodline people are all at ringside. Yeah. That's all you had to change. Yeah, and then you don't get the entrances. <laughs> it is what it is. I feel like even if they just came out sooner, that would have been fine. Because like the, the first instant that Roman was in any sort of danger, they come out, hmm. which sort of was there because it was first crossroads. But Cody like hit a Cody cutter. He had a figure four locked in before any interference happened. It's like, well, you're giving him a chance to just win. So maybe yeah. you have people come out as soon as Cody gets any, like Roman dominates the start with the, for like a couple minutes. And then as soon as Cody comes back into it, something happens and they're like, oh, bloodline rules. You yeah. Know, like, I, 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 to, that makes total sense. And I do agree with people, but I think practically there was no other way to do it than this. Because if you have the bloodline out there, you don't get that great singles match. Right. If you have the rock out there, mm -hmm. a second before he comes out, everyone's just going to be paying attention to the rock. 100%. It's, the, it's a distraction. So I, I'm actually going to withdraw any criticism of the bloodline stipulation. That's the thing. They it, should have just not have announced it. Yeah. But I, then how do you do night one? I, I know. Don't know. Yeah. I, I think that, that that's the thing for me is like it doesn't make 100% sense, but it doesn't matter mm. because what they got was so good. Uh, Breezy, Stre uh, Breezy Streamy said, I'm not sure if it has any significance, but I noticed that while watching Cody Rhodes never once successfully used a weapon against Roman. It got countered every time down to the announcer table. Mm. Also, Genesis of McGillicutty greater than Pipe Bomb. I will take that. That's yes, fair. That yeah. is fair. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. 
But Cody, Cody won by wrestling. Mm. Yeah, it was always about wrestling for him. He's a good guy. Yeah. Paul Egan said, perfect night of professional wrestling. Ironically, sports entertainment to the max. Cody was everyone's brother tonight, except Austin's. <laughs> Loved <laughs> Punk doing the JD meme and the purple on his face, which slowly turned into a smile, was beautiful. Die Jack's tweet. What did Punk do? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I haven't seen that. Have you seen Die Jack's tweet? No. Of him just being like, one day, might be a month, might be a year from now. You're all going to boo Cody, and I'm going to come back to this tweet when you do. <laughs> <laughs> Die Jack is smashing it right now. Uh, Harry Hawker said, Between the Wyndham Rotunda tributes and the Cody celebration, I haven't cried so much in years. This was easily my favorite WrestleMania. Such a fun two days, and I hope you all got to enjoy it between the countless hours of work. Thank you, WrestleTalk. Thank oh, you. Wow, yeah, we have enjoyed it. Yeah, very well, much. The first so. thing we did this morning was just look at each other and go, mm -hmm. and then we high five. High fived. It was great. <laughs> um, on the subject of WrestleMania general, uh, late ones from last night's live reaction stream, Mason said, oh, so that's what X7 <laughs> felt like. <laughs> yeah, I think that is an apt comparison. Uh, and another one from uh, Sunday's live reaction stream, uh, Lesnar wins the title tomorrow night. Lol. Mm -hmm. God, I hope not. Well, Austin turns heel at the end of 7. X7. X7, yeah, that's true. That is a very... And people were confused and booed. Yeah. And that arguably killed the Attitude Era. Yeah. So, maybe not the, the same. Yeah, maybe not not that. Uh, Matt Hennessy said, God this damn it. Is more, sorry, this is more Tyson, mm. Austin, Michaels. Yeah. Whichever mania that was. 14? 15? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep, one of them. Survival series. Yeah. Right, right, right. Matt Hennessy said, God damn it, I love pro wrestling. WrestleMania 40 was about six people finishing their stories. Sammy, Drew, Priest, Bailey, Cody, and Triple H. Over the last few days, everyone has been giving Trips his flowers, from Heyman to Pat to Cole to Big E to CM Punk to Rock, and he absolutely deserves them. If WrestleMania 40 was the beginning of the Triple H era, then I'm all in. The days of scripts being destroyed, wrestlers not being pushed because they're small, and a backstage bullying culture are over. Just like Cody, we as fans won. Very nicely said. Uh, Lobby Warsaw said, Mania 40 started a little rough when it's all said and done. Uh, I believe that it lived up to expectations. Uh, it's a top 10 Mania easily. It might even be in my top three. It might be recency bias, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. Mm -hmm. I agree. Noah Fortner said, I should not be complaining, but obviously the taker spot was for Austin, but I cannot shake the idea that if they couldn't do Austin for whatever reason, that should have been Sting. Oh my God. Instead, I'm, I'm not complaining. <laughs> just thought it was a cool idea. That would have been nuts. That would make even less sense. Yeah. Um, Kevin said, Sammy Gunther, EO Bailey, Rhea Becky, and both main events were amazing bouts. I love that many people lost because they were too focused on the wrong things. Jay Spear on Jimmy was better than their whole match on night one. <laughs> However, AJ's new theme is a no. Interesting. I mean, I think his old one is all right, but this one is also all right. I think it's a, a straight swap. Uh, Westhead said, really thought Bailey would pull out a hair tie in the finish, being beat down, put her hair in a ponytail, oh. pull it right, duck a move into a Bailey to belly for the win. Alas, still a fantastic match. Um, Luke, did you ever frequent the Swan in Liverpool? Luke's not here, but we'll ask him. Mm. Uh, Mason said, thank no, Luke, you. Luke, Luke never lived in Liverpool. No, that's true. He, he's family herald from Liverpool. Yes. And he makes a big deal of it all the time. He sure does. Uh, Mason said, thank you to WWE for kicking out that fan that tried to hijack Bailey and Io's match by screaming that he believes women can't wrestle. And a thank you to Bailey and Io for making him look dumb by having a banger match. Agreed. I didn't see this. Yeah. Uh, this guy was just screaming that women can't wrestle and then he got kicked out. I was like, yeah. What a douche. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um... Jerome Capo said, In my 25 years of life and of the 18 WrestleManias I've watched live, I can firmly say this was my favorite. I've already gone back and rewatched the Gunther vs. Zayn match, both women's matches, and both main events. Night one, 8 out of 10. Night two, 10 out of 10. Mm. Unknown Super Chat said, While there uh, were some matches I enjoyed more than others, Night 2 and Night 1 to me felt like night and day. When Night 1 felt long, drawn out, and formulaic, Night 2 felt exciting, and I've narrowed it down to match order. A great mania, maybe even top 10. Yeah. Agreed. Well, definitely top definitely 10. Definitely top 10. Maybe top 5, maybe top 3 yeah. for me. Uh, Ziggy Gamma said, For the longest time, I didn't watch wrestling live, and I didn't have the energy to even watch podcasts, but I'm feeling so high off the energy from last night. Side note, as a Damien Priest fan, I really shouldn't have taken a bathroom break after <laughs> Drew won. 
That's very unfortunate. Uh, Aaron Iron said, I was in Philly for the show. It was my first WrestleMania and I couldn't help tearing up. My eardrums and my voice may never recover, but I don't care. That was awesome. I got to see all my action figures mm. come to life. It did feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Fujiwara Armbar 420 said, Hey guys, on UK time here. Stayed up most of the weekend to stream WrestleMania along with the boys. First ring of Undertaker's Bell got the loudest pop I've heard in years. KO's entrance gave me chills. Priest Cashin should be known as the Philadelphia Drew Job. <laughs> sounds vaguely inappropriate we uh yeah with the undertaker's cameo mm -hmm. it's like yeah it doesn't really make sense but oh my god the pop mm -hmm. right can't deny that yep uh joe carfley said i was there for smackdown slash hall of fame slammies and night one great weekend sammy winning uh was the highlight as well as hall Heyman's hall of fame speech slammies were a mess but fun great weekend wwe world was <laughs> not worth the price and superstar did not have a drew shirt unfortunate did you not go to night two apparently not oh it uh, might be too much money to go to mm. both so uh carlito pr said damian priest is the <clears throat> second puerto rican to win a world title first was pedro morales but he's the first of the modern era of professional wrestling to win a world title thank you very much very good victoria said amazing wrestling weekend especially for women's wrestling not on twitter anymore so uh, i can gush about how great it's been with uh, without being scolded bailey versus eo obviously popped off but athena Mar uh, mariah may mina and many more sorry for not being 100 percent wwe but i mean you don't need to apologize for that women's wrestling's fantastic uh watcher said uh, maybe i'm in the minority but i really disliked what happened to drew unless he's guaranteed to win in glasgow i wouldn't blame him if he leaves secondly i instantly thought roman's entrance seemed like a potential epic send-off turns out it was mm. i i the, it's the drew thing's really interesting because you can go well hasn't he re-signed mm -hmm. so i like that and the uncertainty there but i i do think drew wins in glasgow yeah That'd be really cool. Yeah. I'm into that. Um, Anthony Brewer said, Hi, fellas. I enjoy the show as a whole. Thought the Jay Spear off the stage was better than the Usos Brothers <laughs> match. Uh, that finish for the Cody Romeo match was effing insane. I was just hoping Stone Cold would confront The Rock, but still happy for mm -hmm. Taker. Agreed. Radicus Finch said, Imagine if Undertaker had come out on a motorcycle to Limp Biscuit in full <laughs> Judgment Day 2000 gimmick. That would have been Luke Owen's story of another Biscuit Mania finished. Uh, it was still perfect the way it was, though. Top 10 Mania. Pipe bomb, not equal to math. Yeah, I know. It's greater than. Yeah. Fair enough. Graf said, uh, not sure if anyone heard during Seth en Seth's entrance, but Cobb was like, this reminds me of that guy from NXT. No way Jose slash Adam Rose return confirmed. In all seriousness, hmm. this was a pretty good show, especially the main event. We saw the crowning, uh, saw the, saw the crowning of a new top guy. Brain Buster said, after seeing the main events, I think there are three people we need to thank. Gallus. Gallus <laughs> boys on top, baby. While I'm in while I'm steadfast in believing Cody should have won last year, this was one for the books. I see title fight was match of the weekend for me. Fair enough. And um, that's in relation to Gallus training with the rock mm, to absolutely. get him ready for his in-ring match. Yeah. Uh, Tracy WV88 <laughs> said this Wrestlemania was my favorite I laughed I cried I screamed Seth was amazing and was pivotal throughout oh I want him to also have his flowers at the end he said to Cody it's your time now baby he stayed true to his word loved him mm. Uh, James Markin said, as someone that never was a fan of uh, Bloodline's Roman title reign, I'm happy that we can finally move on to fresh new matches with exciting fresh matchups in the main events. I can probably start enjoying WWE again now. Still think all the Triple H era talk was a bit overkill, though. Calling it now, Rock pulls his nation mu uh, mutiny from uh, the Raw after WrestleMania 14 on SmackDown mm. and kicks Roman out of the Bloodline, Ooh. replacing him with Tama and or Lance. That would, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, I also love how your name sounds like just a statement. James Markin. <laughs> James Markin. Oh, James Markin out, bro. <laughs> um, yeah. I also, an, a, an interesting point as well is right at the start of the Roman Reigns title reign back in 2020, he makes a point to say that if he doesn't have that title, he is not the tribal chief. Oh. Like that is a really focal part of the thing being like, I need this title. Otherwise, I'm not the tribal chief. So I wonder if they're going to play on that and be like, well, I'm done now. Yeah. I'm not the tribal chief anymore. Sorry, everybody, you know. Uh, Keg of Meat said, only Anawaii family uh, member missing was Rikishi, who should have been the ref for Jay versus Jimmy. Or at least involved in some I way. think involved, yeah. Uh, Jake Zimmers said, still on my mania high after an all-timer that was night two, and I saw a friend and former, ra former radio co-host from college played bagpipes in the band that played Drew to the Ring. So cool. Show-wise, a great time to be a fan. I love professional wrestling. Philly Andrew said, isn't pro wrestling great? 
born and bred Philadelphian, and this was my first mania. I had an Australian to my left and a Canadian to my right. During that last 20 minutes, we were all best friends and losing our collective S word. God, I bet you're obnoxiously loud. It would have been great. All three of you. Yeah. I've been on awesome. holiday. I've encountered Canadians and it's Australians great. and Americans. I love it. They're, so, they're just like 10 decibels louder than every other nation. That's what you want for mania. It's like Tempest in the office. Yeah. <laughs> He's just natural speaking voice. It's about here. Yeah. That's what he does. Geek of Arabia said, just for fun, a Watsonian reason for Undertaker's cameo, Taker, ever the locker room leader, said enough of Rock's BS and shows up to help Cody up the mountain that Rock was trying to shove him off and then vanishes to go back to do his podcast. <laughs> Save sure. some tigers. Yeah. Vandalia1998 said, that is twice now that Drew has been cashed in on by a money in the bank holder. He's probably starting to hate that briefcase. <laughs> I, I was, forgot about I was, that. I was thinking, like, who's the most cashed in on <clears throat> in history? Because Drew's twice now. Oh, Cena's surely had Cena's a bunch. got to be up there. Not all have been successful. No, because there was Damien Sandow that he beat. There was somebody else, probably. Oh, well. Long nah, we'll time. figure it out. Uh, Tracy WV 88 said, Seth actually said to Drew, you effing deserve this to Drew. I know some uh, hate the presentation of Seth, but that entrance is a Philly representation. He was happy for Drew. I also loved KO and Sammy interaction and KO buggy and getting Randy in. It was amazing. Yeah, so that Mummers thing, I looked into it. It's mm -hmm. a tradition of Philadelphia, yeah. but that doesn't trump telling the story you've been telling for exactly, me. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Lakshmi Narasimhan B has been a member for 30 months in a row. We said, weird thought, imagine Raw opening with broken dreams, only for it to be CM Punk, a bit of symbolic taunting like McIntyre's merch. Maybe. I love that. That's a really fun idea. Do you want me to take over? Yeah, sure. So many. Thank you very much yeah. for everyone's chats, by the way. Yeah. Uh, HE has gifted a member uh, membership, thank you very much, uh, to Cody Santello. And Zombie Boss has also become a member. Uh, Harry Cleaver, evening, gents. Just wanted to thank all of the lovely mods for the hectic weekend they've had. All around a lovely group of people. Quick question, what are your predictions for what happens tonight slash Friday night? Jam that jam. Hashtag you deserve it sat. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, and I think I like it that way. Mm. I don't know. But I'm just curious to see what's going to go down. Judgment Day and ring title celebration. Yeah, damn right. Rhea uh, and Priest as champions still. Here's, here's one. Hardy Boys. Matt Hardy. Just Matt Hardy. It will be just Matt Hardy. Just Matt Hardy. Broken Comes universe. Back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yes, thank you for the mods. <coughs> Everybody thank the mods. Get a thank you mods chant going in the comments. They make these nice for everybody to partake mm -hmm. in. Uh, Eric Christiansen, member for 31 months in a row. Just here to spread positivity and good vibes amongst the WrestleTalk fam. You say that. It's like this Adam Copeland promo on Dynamite. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to talk about positivity. And then they say something like that. Which is? I'm not going to say it. You can say it. <coughs> Mass greater than Pipe Bob. Cheers. Amy says, I was feeling nostalgic before night two. I watched Wrestle Talk videos from the worst of the pandemic era WWE. Wow, how far we've come. Us as wrestling fans have earned this new era. So excited for what's to come. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting language in like the press conference stuff of Triple H being like, you know, the people that, you know, have stuck with it, the people that have, you know, hung on and all that stuff through this type. It's like it's very they're they're just trying to say We've got past it now, yeah. but they can't say that. So it's very interesting, I think, yeah. Ash Finash and Ananthan has been among Berg for 10 months. Acknowledge the Malaysian nightmare. Love you, Swath Nation, the mods. And do you all shout out Workhorse Wrestling Network, love, and cried that one of my idols won. Jam that jam. Fair enough. Hatchy has gifted another Memberg ship and has gifted a Memberg ship to Fox to your nan. Thank you so Fox much, your Hatchy. Nan. Uh, Kevin Raw, member for 14 months. I started watching WWE ever since the Attitude Era until now. I've never felt so invested and emotional with the story. Much love to all of Wrestle Talk. I will say, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano mm -hmm. was at similar levels for me. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say for me this is the greatest story they've ever done. I would. <laughs> it's the, the, There was a big part of the year that, that mm -hmm. wasn't as good. Yeah, I know. And I, I'm not saying Champer and Gargano was flawless. That so, lost its way. So here's so here it is, right? <coughs> WrestleMania forty. Top three mania. Had some bad points. But the great outweighed the bad. Mm -hmm. Bloodline story. It's not perfect. But goddamn the good outweighs the bad. That's fair. 
Um, where were we? Raging MVA, three things in life are certain, death, taxes, and Seth Rollins beats Roman Reigns every single time. Damn right. Um, but Roman Reigns has beaten Seth Rollins on multiple occasions. That's a, it's one of those weird stats that WWE sticks to. Morlan, WrestleMania 21 was my first mania, and it felt like a pivotal shift with new main eventers being made. Edge, Orton, Cena, and Batista, that was very much a passing of the torch mm -hmm. mania and the old guard disposed this feels like that but 10 times bigger i'm happy to be at the peak of my fandom both let's go hell yeah el coyote jason gutierrez my buddy bruno and i did a whole storyline and angle for our wrestlemania watch party is that a way we can send y'all our promos and angle had tons of fun creating it and our friends love the angle haha ha, such a great mania thank you wrestle talk jam that jam yeah send it into support at wrestletalk.com and we'll have a look at it. That sounds really fun. Do you want me to take back over? Yes. Uh, B said, no commentary for me this time. Just wanted to thank the WrestleTalk team for all the great content they provided for WrestleMania week. With so much incredible stuff going on, you guys were the cherry on top. Thanks again for always inspiring me. Thank you. Well, thank you, B. Thank you for watching. Uh, Morland said, Seth is basically modern macho man. Flamboyant outfits, loud, obnoxious personality, and unparalleled obsession to out-wrestle everyone for his title, World Heavyweight Championship for Rollins, IC for Macho Man, to his own peril, and the perfect counterpoint to the company top guy of the era. I, I think Macho Man has uh, an authenticity to him mm -hmm. that underpins all of that crazy outlandish charisma. I feel like Seth Rollins is acting... Mm. this way because i've seen him not be this way yeah savage was always that high intensity so uh, i disagree respectfully eric metzlov said hi guys thanks for all the great content all wrestlemania weekend such a great show the one switch i'd make in the main event was if taker either came out dressed as the dead man or to the biker taker music it felt like dead man music with semi biker taker attire you couldn't have the spot proper you want the gong you want him to appear yeah, but dead man proper you know <laughs> coat and hat you know, uh, Rocky Five, but actually good. Said a uh, fun fact for Ollie's face: the Bloodline Trio entrance on Two K Twenty Four is the same one they gave to the best faction of all time back in the day, the Hurt Business. Nice, mm. that's good. Uh, Spin Roma Twenty Nine said, "What I loved about the main event is that none of the baby faces ever directly affected the match, yeah. besides maybe Seth and Cena. Cena's AA on Roman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just prevented the heels from doing so. Cody won on his own for the most part." Agreed on that, though. Mm. Um, Bud said, of all the things to be excited about coming from what was one of the best WrestleManias, let's not forget Uncle Howdy's in the wings. Can't wait to see where WWE goes in this yeah. new era. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do, though. I don't know if they will. Maybe mm. they'll do something with Bo, but maybe not Uncle Howdy. Mm. I don't know. Um, I'm just Marcus said Undertaker was the most unexpected part of night two and made no sense and I loved it <laughs> I also loved the little smirk on CM Punk's face as Priest music hit like he made up his mind right there I'm going to cost this man the title <laughs> Spin Roma 29 said, what a, uh, oh, sorry, that was the same chat again. Um, but thank you regardless. Uh, Kali Tarawi said, uh, they need to do what they were too scared to do with Bobby Lashley with Roman. Have him get depressed and come back super fat, like Fat Thor, before Gable helps him regain his confidence and physique. I've been pitching this for Bobby Lashley <laughs> for years. Fat Lashley is one of the greatest things we've never had. Uh, it's brilliant. Um, I think that's all the ultra that chats. Feel for, for, for time. Yes. I'm going to go close the poll. I'm really, really curious about what this poll actually ends up as. Like, how high a percentage will the thumbs up be? Okay, I'm going to need you to guess. What do you think the percentage is of thumbs up? 97%. Bang on. 97% <laughs> thumbs up, 2% mid, 0% thumbs down. Wow. The, the maths doesn't add up there, but that's why math is inferior to pipe bomb. 97%, that's the pipe bomb yeah. for you. Well, yep, there you what go. a WrestleMania weekend, but it's a new era. We carry it on from here. There's new chapters. Raw after WrestleMania, or Ram, as the kids are calling it these days, is tonight. So please subscribe to WrestleTalk Podcast. Go to subscribe to WrestleTalk and Parts for Known as well, because we'll have all the coverage tomorrow. We've got Survival Series coming this Friday on uh parts fun known. There's also a new episode of Monday Night War dropping in about twenty five minutes uh on Parts Fun Known. So, so, yeah, as if you haven't had your fill of wrestling content already. Uh, but for now, I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Pete Quinnell. Check out our sponsor at WrestlingMasterclass.com as well to break into the wrestling industry. Jam that jam. <laughs>